Okay, yeah. Um, let's talk about um, simplifying fractions in here right now. Um, um, look at this fraction, 8 over 12. Uh, look at this, 4 over 6. And look at this, 2 over 3. All these are equivalent fractions. Equivalent means they represent the same value. How do I know they represent the same value? Now look at this pie uh, cut into 12 segments. Look at the shaded portion. Can you see what the shaded portion looks like? Imagine if they have given you all these shaded portion as yours and the other parts for a friend of yours. So that means you have taken like eight portions out of 12. Look at the shape of the portion you've been given. Now imagine if that same pie, rather than being cut into 12, was cut into six and you are also given this shaded portion. We may look at it. Can you see it's the same segments that you've been given? But this time it's not 8 out of 12, it's 4 out of 6. The same thing happens here. In all of these, you've been given the same value of pi. It's just that the pieces are just different. You'll be given 2 pieces out of pi here. You'll be given 4 pieces out of 6 here. And you'll be given 8 pieces out of 12 here. And someone is asking me, how can 2 pieces, 4 pieces and 8 pieces represent the same thing? It depends on how large the pieces are which is exactly what is saying here. Now, each piece here is bigger, each piece here is smaller, and each piece here is a smaller. So it depends. So now I want to show you now how do we easily simplify fractions. How do we easily talk about 8 over 12 and it doesn't look like something too big? Imagine you're talking about 144 over 1,000. It's very difficult to picture what that looks like. It's very difficult to picture the value, but if you understand what I'm about to talk about now, it should be easy. Now, let's look at it now. 8 over 12. Do you know that we can easily convert 8 over 12 to 4 over 6? We can easily simplify it to smaller numbers and still represent the same value. Look at what we're going to do. We're going to divide 8 by 2, and it will give you 4. If we divide 12 also by 2, it gives us 6. We have successfully simplified 8 over 12 to get 4 over 6. How did we do that? We divided by the same old number. We divided 8 by 2. We also divided 12 by 2. We used the same number to divide the denominator and the denominator. The number we have used to divide in this case is 2. So 8 divided by 2 gives us 4. 12 divided by the same 2 gives us 6. We have simplified. But this is not the simplest form yet. Let's see. Let's divide by number. Can we divide both numerator and denominator by number and get all numbers? Let's look at it. Yes, we can divide 4 by 2 to get 2. It works. But also, we can still divide 6 by 2 to get 3. And that also works. Beautiful. So in that case, now, we've successfully divided 4 by 2 to get 2. Successfully divided 6 by 2 to get 3. Imagine if this were 5 now. You will not be able to divide it by 2. Because you cannot divide 5 by 2 without leaving a remainder. We are not looking for remainders. So for you to be able to simplify your fraction, you must be able to divide both numerator and denominator by the same old number and get no remainders in each case. Now look at it now. So we've successfully turned 8 over 12 to 2 over 3 in two steps. But do you think you can do it in one step? Ah, oh, okay, let's see. Yes, I can take 8 over 12 to 2 over 3 easily by dividing by what? Okay, did you say 2? No? 4? Are you sure? Ah, 6. Okay, let's find out. We can divide 8 over 12 by 4 to get 2. Divide also by 4 to get 3. So when you divide 8 by 4, you get 2. 12 by 4, you get 3. How is that possible? This is dividing by 2 here. This is dividing by 2 here. You know that 2 times 2 is 4, isn't it? So dividing by 2 twice is just like dividing by 4 once. And that is how it is done quite easily. Okay, I think example 2 will make a little bit more sense. Let's go and clarify. Now look at this now. We want to simplify 24 over 16. We want to simplify, this is improper here. Yeah? I know, yeah, I know you're right. You get that right. This is improper. We want to simplify it. 
Okay, so it's not just proper fractions we can simplify. We can simplify improper fractions as well. So let's look at simplifying this improper fraction. Okay, look at uh, what the first step here. Twenty-four was divided by four to get six. You will note also that six was also divided by four to get four. So it's about you to understand the multiplication tables. Now, if at this point you have issues with your multiplication tables up to 12, I would advise that you get that sorted before next class. I would advise that you get that sorted before next class. Look at it. 24 and 16 have a common factor, and that is 4. So when you divide 16 by 4, you get 4. Divide 24 by 4, you get 6. It must be the same number that you use to divide numerator and denominator. Okay, let's move on. So, but we are not done. That's not the simplest. 6 over 4 is not the simplest. We can go ahead and divide 6 by 2 to get A. And also divide 4 by 2 to get 2. Remember that we divided by 2 here. And by 2 here, the same number. Now, over 2 is the next answer. Do you think we can simplify 3 over 2? Hmm. Can we divide 3 over 2 by any number? Yes, we can divide 2 by 2. And it will not leave by a remainder. But we cannot divide 3 by 2. No. It will leave a remainder. So we can't go further. And 2 is the simplest number. We cannot divide... Yes, we can divide 3 by 3. Yeah. But we cannot divide 2 by 3 without a remainder. Okay, good. So that's settled. So 3 over 2 is the smallest form of that improper fraction. Now, do you think we can actually have divided by a single number to get our answer? Do you think we could have divided by a single number from 24 over 16 to get 3 over 2? What do you say? Yes. Do you know what that single number is? Do you? Do you know what that single number is? We should divide by what? Six? Eight? Do you think we should write by six or eight? Are we going to add two and four to get six? Or we are going to multiply four and two to get eight? Are we adding four and two to get six? Or multiplying four and two to get eight? What do you think we are going to divide by? Let's see. Yes, it is eight. It is eight. Four times two gives you eight. So when you, when you divide... 24 over 16 by 8, you get 3 over 2. So you divide 24 by 8, gives you 3. 16 by 8, gives you 2. And you are okay. So let's look at it. Final. Now this is actually self-explanatory. This is actually self-explanatory. Uh, 24 over 40 is the fraction. That's proper. We want to see what the lowest term is. Okay, so there are eight students in this class. Student 1 divided by 2 numerator and denominator and got 12 over 20. I was very proud of himself. Yes, I have simplified the fraction. Okay, uh, student 2 divided by 4 numerator and denominator and got 6 over 10. Was very proud of himself and like, wow, I am good. Student 3 divided 24 and 40 by 8, both of them by 8, and got 3 over 5. And he was also very proud of saying, so wow, I am super good. Now, all the students are right. They all got simplified versions of the fractions. But the simplest, remember, we are always looking for the simplest form. The simplest form is to divide by 8. The bigger the number you divide by, Simpler the answer you will get. Remember, it must leave no remainder. 24 divided by 8 leaves no remainder, gives you 3. 40 divided by 8 gives no remainder and gives you 5. And that's the biggest number that is common to 24 and 40. So, we are good. So, you can start when you want to uh, simplify fractions. I think it's always very a good idea to start dividing by your prime numbers. Start with 2. And see if 2 can divide. Start with 3 and see if 3 can divide. Start with move to 5 and see if 5 can divide. Okay. 
at least for starters, it's always a good idea to start with these simple numbers. Okay, thank you.